is SWBC Mortgage's Cowboys Cross Talk. Cross Talk. Check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Brought to you by A Number One Air, the official HVAC and electric partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com, trusted by millions, trusted by America's team. The National Medal of Honor Museum. Join the mission at mohmuseum.org. And by SWBC Mortgage. Customized solutions to help you meet your personal and business goals. Visit SWBC.com. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton and Kevin Gray. We are live back in the building at the Cowboys Club. Welcome to week seven. Yes, sir. The National Football League <laughs> Cowboys yes. Crosstalk. Kevin Gray of 105 through the fan. Six-time Pro Bowl and three-time Super Bowl champion, Nate Newton in the building. Yes, sir. Woo, woo, woo. SWB, baby, say. <laughs> Appreciate yes. you joining us live on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network on your home of the Cowboys 105 through the fan. Joining us this week, our Dallas Cowboys insider for 105 through the fan. You can find him on Twitter at Bobby Belt TX. He is, of course, Bobby Belt. Bobby, what's going on? I'm excited to be here. Excited to be back here with you. Appreciate it, man. Good to see you once again. Glad to be back in the saddle. And our Cowboys legend this week, <laughs> none other than he's an Albany State Ram, eight-year NFL veteran, five <laughs> years with the Dallas Cowboys. He is a two-time Super Bowl champion. Kenny the Shark Gant yeah, in yeah. the building. How Good to see you in this nice evening, sweetie. sir. Yes. How are you? I'm doing great. Just, well, I'm under the circumstances. I just left Albany State homecoming this past weekend. Oh, so you so <laughs> you all play Jackson oh, okay. State? Okay. <laughs> we play. <laughs> <laughs> We actually played Benedict and they lost. Okay. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, man. No. You joking. <laughs> no. No. Look, the look on his face is no. We, I'm oh, not joking. It was crazy. Well, hopefully you had a good time other than the game itself. I had an amazing time. Well, we yes. appreciate you taking a little bit of time with us on this Wednesday <laughs> evening. We appreciate all of us joining us on 105 Through the Fan, of course, on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. And uh, it is week seven. The yes. Dallas Cowboys coming back home, the first of four straight games against the NFC North and they start by playing the Detroit Lions, the fighting, biting kneecaps of Dan Campbell <laughs> coming to AT&T Stadium on Sunday afternoon. Uh, Nate, I want to start with you. Let's put a bow on what happened on Sunday night. The Dallas Cowboys losing on the road to Philadelphia. Let's turn the page here from your observations on what you saw. What do the Cowboys need to take from what happened Sunday night to ensure it doesn't happen on Sunday afternoon? We have to number one understand that we played a complete team. It wasn't like the Rams. You had this guy on this level. We had three different levels, even though they had guys on three different levels, the, the, the cornerback, the down lineman, and a good linebacker. This team here was the most solid and most physical team that we played. Yes. They were a complete team. Defensive line with Javon Hargrave, uh, the big Fletcher Cox, yep. and, Brian, and Brian Jordan. And then on top of that, they had Brandon Graham, some nice linebackers, two corners that completely took our wide receivers out of the Bradbury game. Bradbury and Slade. Yeah. Hey. Offensive yeah. line. If you want to see what a center looked like, Mr. Bobby Bell, I'm quite sure. <laughs> you know, he beat our boy, our boy <laughs> Hannah so bad, he out on the field cramping, <laughs> cramping in the middle of winter. Yeah. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? We played a complete team. Now, yes. what we do to uh, combat that, is we fixed the quarterback spot. Okay. Because we could not complete passes to our wide receivers. Yes. We had to involve the tight ends, Bobby. Yeah, not, not just involve the tight ends. I mean, as, as bad as that was, I, I mean, as tough as the loss as that was, <laughs> and as complete a football team as you played, yes. if your quarterback doesn't turn the ball over three times, you're in that game. Yes. And, and, yes. and, and so, I, I mean, ultimately this will be about – Limiting turnovers, I, I think everybody's excited to get your quarterback back in the fold. The, you know, the, the leader is back, mm -hmm. the captain is back, and I, I think that that's going to be a huge boost for everybody, not just the, the way that he plays. I mean, there, there, there's a chance for some rust coming off of, you know, not playing for as long as he has, but I just think it's going to be a big morale boost for everybody yes. uh, getting their guy back out there. You listen to everybody in the locker room talking this week and last week, everybody's itching to get Dak Prescott back. Can you talk to me about what that does for a team when they do see their franchise quarterback return? This is a team in Dallas is going to see Dak Prescott returning after missing the last several weeks due to the broken thumb. What does that do for the conference to see your franchise, your quarterback? <laughs> what did it look like when Troy walked into the locker room? Yes. Like, he's back and he's ready to play. Uh, that's again. what I'm saying. We, we've been through it, you know, with the Jason Garrett, with the 
uh, Steve Berline as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And, um, but they came in and did what they supposed to do, and uh, we won a few games. But Troy was that guy. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's – we back. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> is that the collective feeling uh, in the locker room? Like, it, we're back it, at this we, point. We, it, we we complete now. Yeah. You know, it's because we didn't know. We knew they was good players. But sure. But still, you sitting there like, they ain't Troy, though. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, Steve did a good job. Jason did a good job. But Rodney when Troy, P. did a good yeah, job. Rodney P. did a good job. Yeah. But what was, the air, what was the air in the room like when Troy walked back into the room and what that did for the confidence of the entire football team? And, and, and I don't want to compare those teams to our teams because, yes. you know, it's a different level. Sure. Uh, but it, it, it just makes you feel good. And what I think Troy brings – excuse me, what I think Dak brings to this team – is okay a certain uh foes he can do much better yes than this guy but we still have to be who we are we are led number one first by the defense then number two we're led by the defense <laughs> and i think i know honest, you're going number three <laughs> and then number three we have to be collective in our run game yes and and and, and number four more importantly and, and I've been preaching this, and, and Bobby, you may not agree with me, but if we get the ball from the hour one to hour 39, it stays the same because you have to still play to the strength. That's your defense. Yes. You run quick passes, sprint outs, uh, option, uh, uh, throw pass options. But now when we get on hour 40, I'm going to let Dak say, hey, Dak, do you. Yes. yes. Because I don't, but because I say from 39 on back, mm-hmm. I can't have our defense playing on a short field. Yep. I, it's just playing to the strength. Yeah. And so, I mean, people laughing at me and everything like that. You can laugh all you want. Yes. <laughs> I know this work after three Super Bowls. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, Bobby, what you think? No, man? no, I, th- I think you're absolutely right there. And, and more specifically, you talk about running some of those speed outs and stuff yes. like that. Yes, yes. That's where Dak is going to make a difference there because Cooper Rush, playing between the numbers, was really solid. Did right. exactly what you want from a backup quarterback. Some of those throws to the outside, he doesn't quite have the same yes. arm strength Dak does. Right, he can't right. get it. And I think you saw that when – Philadelphia is able to get their hand on 12 passes wow. last week. 12 pass breakups. You know the Packers have 12 pass breakups all season. Philly had 12 <laughs> on Sunday night. That's where a difference is going to be made, and I think you're right. Once you right. get up to the 40, you start letting your quarterback take some chances because as good as this defense is, and, and Nate said it, they're one, they're two, they're three. Yes. Uh, as good as this defense is, they're going to give up points when they're given a short field. Yes. When, when, when the team turns over the ball, when they when they miss on fourth down. Wow. I mean, you got to look. Three straight drives they scored last week where they moved the ball in total on those three drives, 80 yards. Yeah. That wow. was it, 80 yards, and they put up 13 points and scored three times yes. because it didn't matter what the defense did at that point. Right. You know, Philly had a short field. They were going to be in scoring range almost from the jump. So limit those turnovers. You know, I, I, I think take some chances oh, once yeah. you get closer to the middle of the field. And uh, I, I think that Dak is going to improve more than anything. People have talked about, will the game plan change? I just think the efficiency is going to change. Right. They're going to be a more efficient team running this offense. Kenny, when you look at this quarterback coming back now as a defense, when you're as talented as this Cowboys defense is, what are you telling your quarterback about what he, what you want to see from him in order to help you out on a defense to help you be at your best week in and week out? Just be efficient. Don't turn the ball over. Because yeah. you guys are all right. We don't want a short field. <laughs> we don't want to sit down and then all of a sudden we back up back again. on the field right. again. It's it, and we was energized, but it's still taxing, you know. Sure. Um, but it's uh, but what we want for the quarterback just stay efficient because I think in this I was telling people always ask me questions. What do you think about Cooper Rush is the guy? I said no. Nah. <laughs> I said not not that I'm knocking Cooper Rush. Sure. I, I said. To be honest with you, this that getting hurt taught the coaches how to coach. Yes, oh, it did. So, okay. Yes, it did. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm wow. saying? So it it brought we gonna run. This is what we do. Mm-hmm. And then we open up here. Right. And so it taught the coaches how to coach. So I'm just stick with yeah. the same thing. Let's explore that a little more, Bobby. I'm gonna go to you on that because <laughs> from Kellen Moore's perspective, what do you think he learned in this last several weeks? 
working with Cooper Rush that will help Dak Prescott now when he gets back on the field starting this week against the Lions? I, I, I don't know that it's necessarily what, I mean, Kellen Moore learned. It's, it's what Dak Prescott's talked about, you mm -hmm. know, which is he realizes the game doesn't have to be so complex. You can simplify things at times. But, look, I think one thing that Kellen Moore deserves a lot of credit for yeah. or, over the course of his time being offensive coordinator is when he is, you know, thin on personnel, when they're running <laughs> reserves, he does a really good job of playing to the strengths and making those reserves comfortable. You look at, you know, the type of offense they put up when Garrett Gilbert had to step in against oh. the Steelers in 2020, when Ben DiNucci had to play against Philly. I've said yeah. before, it's a miracle they scored nine points against Philadelphia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that, that's one of the best games I've ever seen called. The way that he called things with Andy Dalton and, and was able to generate offense there with Cooper Rush several times. Um, I, I think that he just plays to those strengths. And yeah. so it's more going to be about, I think, how, how Dak plays coming back and how comfortable he is in that offense. But, you know, like you guys talked about, a big part of this is going to be sustaining drives. Yes. You, you talk about they are currently in the league right now. They are fifth, they're fifth worst in the NFL, the Cowboys are, right, right. in average drive time. Right. So you're talking wow. about they have the ball and then they're turning it right back over. And I'm curious for you, uh, Kenny, how does that <laughs> stress you guys? When, when you don't get that breather, when you've got an offense Ooh. that it's three, four plays out, and you're back on the field. It's rough. It makes you rough on the sideline because, you know, we, we look forward to bring, having that break, and we look forward to – go ahead. No, no go ahead on because you just remind me of something. Go ahead on. <laughs> well, no, I'm serious. So we, you're speaking good truth. Yeah, we was – you know, we, we, we prided ourselves on – if we keep a team under 17 points, we had a great opportunity to win. And that, that means we was getting turnovers – we was knocking, you know, we can't knock folks out these days, but we was, <laughs> we was knocking them out. And getting you got to gently lay them down on the ground. We got to lay them down. Yeah, lay them down softly but on the Knocking pillow. them out and then shark dancing. <laughs> and, and then Troy, Troy just do efficient. Yeah. yeah. It, it just move the sticks, man. Kevin, Bobby, <laughs> this is what people don't understand. <laughs> when we went that first three and out, that second three and out, did six and out. Mm-hmm. Mm. Kenny them, and I'm come just saying yes. when we played, you at least want it. It's quicker now, much yeah. quicker. Yes. They, if we did that, they didn't even get a chance to get back to the sideline <laughs> to watch the Polaroid. <laughs> yeah. Remember the Polaroid? Trying to come make down the, the yeah, yeah. That You would want to make adjustments. Yes. What do you see, Kenny, as a, as a nickel mm. guy? What do you see, Woody, as the safety? What, what do you see up front, y'all? So now they can all come together, the coaches. Can all come together and say, hey, man, yeah. we running an over here, da-da-da. We shouldn't blitz it coming out of this. Look, give, if you don't give a chance, that defense a chance, I don't care how great. Yeah. They can't make adjustments. So I'm playing the fiddle on them. I'm playing the fiddle yes. on them as an offensive coordinator. But if we can get out there and get six, seven, eight plays, they get some water, they get some Gatorade, <laughs> yeah. or whatever drugs they use on the side. <laughs> now, hold on now, hold on now, hold on now, hold on now. I don't but, know what they use these days. I don't know. <laughs> but here's the thing. It, it made me think of. And it was a, I think it was a 15 play drive. It yeah. took nearly over seven and a half minutes. Yes. What happens when the Cowboys get the ball in the next possession? Cooper Rush throws an interception on the first <laughs> right. pass. Right. And now the defense is back on the football field. Right. And I'm sure Mike and the guys are like, look, man, we just got out here. We just got demoralized <laughs> right. on a 15 play drive. Get us a chance to get a little bit Correct. of a breather. Absolutely. And next thing you know, you turn the football over. Yes, because it, it happens. And what happens too is that we we need. We need that breather. Yeah. Yeah. Because you got we, a chance to get it in adjustments, get a chance to catch your wind a little bit. Yeah. And then you try to go ahead and handle business. Because I still, if you're looking at the game, I, I just saw some of the game because I was traveling, then I'd stop and watch some of the game. Mm -hmm. Number 11, I, I don't know his name. Yeah, Michael Parsons. Parsons. Yeah. No, the other 11 from Philly. The, 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 the receiver, receiver they just oh, got, the yeah, big guy. Yeah. AJ Brown. AJ Brown. AJ yeah, Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't have time to just make an adjustment to the dude was standing. We would have been seeing him standing in the backfield, and he run right across Michael Parsons. Yeah. And Parsons don't even know what to do. Right. He, that's an adjustment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he just catch the ball and just – it's nobody over there. Yeah. It's like <laughs> – Didn't have a chance to make the adjustment because you didn't have a chance to look right. at it on, on yeah. the film. Yeah. So, so, look, now the Cowboys get ready to welcome in the Lions on Sunday. We'll see what adjustments they get ready to make as they get ready to take on Dan Campbell and his football team. It is Cowboys Crosstalk live at Cowboys Club here at the Star in Frisco. Our Cowboys legend, Kenny the Shark Gant, joining us tonight right. right here live at the Cowboys Club. <laughs> Coming up next year on Cowboys Crosstalk, what will be different and what won't change with Dak Prescott back in the office? We'll ponder that question next on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network.
SWBC Mortgages Cowboys Cross Talk. Cross Talk. Check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Brought to you by A Number One Air, the official HVAC and electric partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com, trusted by millions, trusted by America's team. The National Medal of Honor Museum. Join the mission at mohmuseum.org. And by SWBC Mortgage. Customized solutions to help you meet your personal and business goals. Visit swbc.com. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton and Kevin Gray. Back live at the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. It is Cowboys Crosstalk on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Kevin Gray. Nate Newton, our Dallas Cowboys insider, Bobby Bell, and our legend this week, Kenny the Shark Gant, joining us live at the Cowboys yes. Club in the Star in Frisco. Yes. Appreciate you joining us, however, and wherever you may be listening on this evening at SWBC Customized Solutions for Individuals and Businesses are just a click away. Visit SWBC.com to learn more and start your next adventure and if it's anything like tonight nate will be with you on your next adventure uh speaking of adventures lions tigers and bears oh my the lions coming in this weekend at AT at&t stadium at high noon right here at the star in arlington i should say and it is the return of four dak prescott is going to be back it appears he practiced today 40 to 50 throws looks like going to be tomorrow as well as he did today uh let's get into it what will be different and what won't be different about this offense with Dak Prescott back Nate I'll start with you what changes and what doesn't change with the return of one rain Dakota Prescott there will not be an instant connection but I'm talking with the wide receivers but the wide receivers will be better yes versus the first game I think that by what Bradbury did and what Big play Slay, who never got hurt for this team, but stayed hurt for Detroit. Right. You know, I don't like that. But anyway, they, if I'm them, I'm watching film, Bobby. I'm yes. watching film, Kenny. Absolutely. Uh, like, okay, how, what did they do to stop me and improve on that? Because these next two corners are not that. I don't no. even know their name. What's the next two corners? I don't even know their name. <laughs> don't even care to know. CB1, CB2. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just saying. That, that, that they will see a better quarterback mm-hmm. with, with certain passes, like, like you said, the outside routes. They will see a better quarterback. They got to get a little bit more space, and, and they'll be able to roll. It may be one or two throws where he'd be off, but th- that, that is what I think should happen. Dak, or excuse me, Bobby, you're not Dak. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Bobby, manage the expectations for me and Cowboys fans when it comes to Dak Prescott and his return on Sunday and what that means for them. Yeah, I, I mean, look, I think like Nate said, there's still going to be timing issues and things like right. that. He's been away from the field for a long time. They work on that timing all off season, all training camp. You know, those practice reps matter. So it doesn't matter that, you know, the Lions are the 32nd ranked defense right, in right. yards and points. Right. There are going to be moments where it's, okay, he skipped that throw. Or, oh, that one sailed. Or, oh, he zigged and he right. zagged. And, and, you know, the connection wasn't there. And so I think it's just it's important to expect some level of rust, regardless of the opponent. Correct. And, and it, it's less about what the opponent is doing. It's more about what he and his receivers are doing to get in sync. And that's just going to take time. That, that's going to take reps. But, uh, you know, to go on the other end of that and not necessarily throttle things back and temper mm-hmm. things. You're going to be a better football team on third down now. I think you're going to be a better team in the red zone. You're going to be a better team uh, in terms of just the way that Dak can and extend third, plays. Now. with it. Yeah. They, they are not going to be fifth worst in the NFL in drive time with Dak at quarterback. Wow. That's just not going to happen anymore. Yes. They're not going to have all these three and outs, I don't think. Cooper Rush, look, I think he did a, a, a tremendous job filling in doing exactly what they asked him to do. Mm-hmm. But, you know, captain's back. And, and, and this is the guy that, that they paid $40 million to. This yes. is your franchise quarterback, and, and it matters. Kenny, this is an yes. offense last year that was number one in scoring offense, number yes. one in total offense last year. How does this offense change now, and what do you want to see from Dak Prescott in managing this version of the Cowboys offense now well, going saw, forward? I saw a few throws from uh, Rush, you know, that was going to be interceptions. Sure. I would have loved to, to play it against him. <laughs> <laughs> you like you Cooper Rush. Jumped, you uh, saw some passes like I yeah. could have intercepted yeah, a couple of those passes it's right there. Back. But with Dak coming back, he can throw those guys open. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't necessarily have to be open. That's one thing I hated about Troy in practice. You know, I thought I was going to get cut <laughs> because I know I'm on Mike. Yeah. But how did he catch the ball? Because 
Troy threw him open, and I think they get those throws back. And um, I think uh, uh, it's going to be some time in this Sure. Because, you know, everything, relationships take time. That's true. So. Say it again for the folks in the back. Say it again. Yeah, the back. Relationships take time. That is yeah. very true. That's so, just life advice. That's yeah. very true. So the more you you be in a relationship, the better it gets. You know, you're going to have some ups and downs. But you through the game, you're going to see it getting better. From a protection standpoint, Nate, uh-huh. what does Dak Prescott do to help his guys out up front when it comes to the Biotishes of the world, the Tyler Smiths of the world who's going to be protecting him on his blind side? How does he coming back help this confidence of this offensive line? I think he, can, he moves around a little bit better. You know, he feels the pocket because he has some more experience, so he feels the pocket a little bit better. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a believer that, and, 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 and I'm wrong for asking this question or asking <laughs> this of Dak. I want the four-year ago Dak. Oh, you want the rookie Dak? Yeah, I want the rookie Dak. I oh, want it. okay. And 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 once again, see, I live in a in a fantasy world because I am a, a homer. <laughs> so I'm serious. You and Michael Irvin yeah. stay on that uh, <laughs> so on that homer train. That's all if, right. If, if I'm Dak, right. I'm like, whoa, what's my most recent picture of me? <laughs> Y'all just left Philadelphia and you saw it. If that, if Jalen, when I'm looking at Jalen Hurts, I'm looking at, that's what Dak used to do. Correct. Mm. He used to get those two or three yard first downs. When it's third and four, he dropped back. Oh, I just take off and run and get us four more extra downs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll extend this right here to save my defense. <laughs> yes. and, and, and maybe I'm wrong for asking that because he's matured with the passing game. But I don't look at Dak as a drop back quarterback. I drop, I look at him as a play action pass quarterback that has the ability to sprint out, naked reverse, uh, naked boots, and all of that. You know, that's how I look at Dak, and, and 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 that's my expectation for him. I mean, maybe somebody's asking for more. I, I don't see it that way. <laughs> well, Bobby, talk to me. What kind of version do you want to see of Dak? I, I mean, I'll say that when we talk about changes and and what may be different, I don't think you need in order to get the passing game going. I don't think you need to run max protect as much as right. you have with Cooper Rush. Yeah, oh, preach, bro, and, and preach. So I, I, I mean, you know, I, I think that you're going to be able to, you know, actually have, you know, full route concepts. Um, I, I think that it looks like, obviously you can't know for sure mm-hmm. and without, right. you know, the coaches telling you, but it looks like they're running fewer option routes. I think that those are probably more in play with Dak than they were with Cooper Rush. Um, I, I think that, who really benefits from this is once Dalton Schultz is healthy, Dalton Schultz benefits mm. from the return of Dak Prescott. Rookies are they, playing good football they, right now. They've got, they've got really like, – like, they've got a ton of trust in each other. They, they, they've got great chemistry. Mm-hmm. And then the other person who benefits and, and the, the way the offense benefits is Dak and Michael Gallup have that downfield connection. Oh, yeah. and, and that's something that's been missing – from the offense without Dak Prescott in there is the ability to take shots downfield, run routes seven, eight, nine in the tree, you know, run those post corners and, and go routes. Those are back in play now specifically with Michael Gallup. So, um, you know, it's, it's like we've talked about here, though. There, there's going to be there's going to be a feeling out period and a, a <laughs> you know, a, a reacquainting ourselves period. Um, but look, I think that this team can can be really, really good with this defense. Yes. The way the running game's been, the way the offensive line is starting to come more into their own. I thought Tyler Smith, for for the highlight or two where he he had trouble against Philadelphia, I thought mm-hmm. overall he played really well against Philadelphia on Sunday. And so um, I, I think that getting your quarterback back at this exact right time and being able to really have the full complement of weapons on yes. your offense, it, it's exciting to me what they can be moving forward. The number is 13. The Cowboys are 4-0 when leading at halftime this season since 2000, since the start of 2021. Dallas is a perfect 13-0 after leading at the break. The most wins among any team during that span. (laughs) Kenny, when you hear that kind of a number, knowing that Dak Prescott's coming back, what does that now do for a defense that says, hey, all you need to do, Dak, in this offense, get us a lead, and we can handle our business from there? And I think that would have happened the other day um, because we got to keep those those turnovers was big. Yes. Yeah. So um, what we had to do, if they come out, when when Nate and them used to come out and just put points on the board, man, we was we was playing I'm literally tripping people before we go on the field because we were just that <laughs> hype. You tripping. couldn't wait to get on the yeah, field. Yeah, we couldn't wait to get on the field. Yeah. So we was waiting to get the ball back, see who's going to 
buy drinks tonight because <laughs> see who's gonna Nate, get a turnover. Nate buying drinks tonight. See who's gonna get a turnover first. <laughs> yeah, he was talking about the defense. Because we, we the defense. Yeah, yeah. We 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 was amongst each other trying to see who's gonna buy drinks tonight. Yeah. Because who's gonna get the turnover so the offense can come back out here so we can drive them in the ground. Yeah. And I think this is this is what I'm excited about. Because I know we got the defense to do it. But the defense got to have that rest because yeah. it <laughs> gotta get it, that rest. Because I yeah. I've seen a tape about a week ago. My buddies remind me of it. Barry Sanders, we was up in Silver Dome up oh, there. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah the <laughs> one where you guys thought you had a crap. <laughs> and we I thought we was going. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey that, you're, 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 see, it's similar there. Your, yeah. quarter, your starting quarterback came back against the Lions uh-huh. just like this week. And it, it's like he, man, he, he ran behind at least four of us. <laughs> I, I can admit it. I was one of them. I yeah. turned him in and went in there, and, and he ran behind me again. So, it's – I'm excited about that coming back. Yes, I think a lot of Cowboys yeah, fans are yes, excited yes. to see the return of four. SWBC Mortgage joined the more than 120,000 customers that we've helped to find their happier way home. Visit SWBCMortgage.com to find a pro today. It is Cowboys Crosstalk live on the Dallas Cowboys radio network at the Star in Frisco at the Cowboys Club. Coming up next, the Cowboys take on the Lions this week. What does Dan Quinn's defense have to do to get after Jared Goff and that Detroit Lion offense? We'll talk about it next on Cowboys Crosstalk right here on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. SWBC Mortgages Cowboys Cross Talk. Cross Talk. Check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Brought to you by A Number One Air, the official HVAC and electric partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com, trusted by millions, trusted by America's team. The National Medal of Honor Museum. 
Join the mission at mohmuseum.org and by SWBC Mortgage. Customized solutions to help you meet your personal and business goals. Visit swbc.com. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton and Kevin Gray. Back live at the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. It is Cowboys Crosstalk live on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Kevin Gray, three-time Super Bowl champion, Nate Newton, our yes. Dallas Cowboys insider for 105 through the fan, Bobby Belt. Our Cowboys legend this evening, Kenny the Shark Gant, joining us live at the Star in Frisco. Appreciate you joining us, however, and wherever you may be listening, SWBC PEO helping to alleviate the HR administrative burden that comes with running a business. Leave the worrying to us. Visit SWBCPEO.com to find out more. The Dallas Cowboys welcome in the Fighting Dan Campbells on Sunday afternoon live on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network, 105 through the fan at high noon. That game is also on CBS. That means Jim Nance, Tracy Wolfson, Antonio Romero Romo will be on the call for CBS on Sunday afternoon. And this Cowboys... I thought Tony Romo was doing the game. That's, that's his full government name, Antonio oh, okay, Romero okay. Romo. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. We're trying uh, to get his passion uh, for broadcasting the back these days. Guard yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they'll be on. Wow. So if you want to watch it on television, CBS will have the game live. But, of course, you can wow. listen on the Dallas Cowboys radio network. Uh, Kenny, I want to start with you because... This is a Dallas Cowboys defense that has helped this team now become 4-2. and two. Yes. Dak Prescott is returning, but they obviously have stars all over this defense. Trayvon Diggs, Micah Parsons, among others. What are you wanting to see from this Cowboys defense on Sunday as they attack Jared Goff in this offense for Detroit? Be smart um, because they can make the plays, but all this, this jaw – Man, Jimmy would have got rid of at least two of us last week. <laughs> right. Oh, no, not so, rid of two of y'all yeah. at least last week. It would have been been stars. It would have been, been, been an average after. guy, but he'd have been gone. Oh, somebody wouldn't have made yeah. the plane yeah. ride somebody back home. Somebody wouldn't have made right. the plane. Yeah. So yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't have to do all that, man. Yeah. We, let's just get the job. We, we got the defense. I've been excited more than i ever been in a long time. Right. Mm. And, and, um, and they, they remind me of us. Six people on a tackle, you know, somebody flying across the swarming. I, they're swarming, man, and I and I, they just need to just stay, just be smart, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it keep your take, poise. Look at some more discipline this yes, week. Yes, yes. Wow, that's Talk, sweet. Nate, what did you see from that defense wow. last week? Where at times the RPO got to him a little bit. Obviously, trying to read Jalen Hurts, trying to read AJ Brown, trying to read the things that they were doing. Got to him a little bit last week. I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all something, Bobby. Go back and look at that film. Yeah. I saw for the first time Parsons. I remember when he had a straight beeline shot to a running back going to his, to his left. But at the last moment, he kind of held up because of that groin. Mm. I saw a couple of times where uh, a, a wide receiver where he normally just closed the gap like it's nothing. But he couldn't get there. Yeah. Uh, people say he was reading a lot. I, you know what? <laughs> If he faced that again, my thing to him, if he's healthier than he was this past, don't read, son. Yeah. Just go Just get the go ball. Just go read and react. Just go react. Just go get the ball because I think he could have got a couple of punishing hits. Yes. Nobody likes to be hit. Oh, that running back physical. Well, continually hit him. You know, like A.J., like A.J., the, the big the number 11. A.J. Brown. Brown. Yep. Man, yeah. we should have been. Even though he'd love it, I wouldn't give him all the hands he wanted. He would have thought I'd been a back. He loved the physicality, A.J. Brown. He loved the physicality. Bro. Uh, either, uh, out of laid hands on him. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> they say he would have baptized him a little yeah, bit that, uh, coming across the middle because, a bit. I'm serious because still the better teams in this league and the more playoff-bound teams, they're going to do this. Yes. They're going to be like, okay, you are this and you are that, but we're going to lay hands on you and we're going to be distinct in what we're doing. I think we waited to the last minute defensively because of fatigue, our yeah. injury. Mm -hmm. We didn't play with that ferociousness mm -hmm. through the whole game. Now, they wanted to. Believe me, number 11 wanted to, but that thing held him back a little bit. On certain plays that where I know he could close the gap, he didn't do it. Bobby, I saw some poor tackling on Sunday night. Did you see some of that as well as far as some missed tackles that maybe contributed to some of the struggles defensively for the Cowboys against Philadelphia? Yeah, and, I mean, Dan Quinn talked about that on Monday, mm -hmm. that, yes. that they, they counted up 10 missed tackles in the game, that it was a, a rough night for that. and. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I mean, I, I got a question for Kenny here because, yes. you know, you talk about the, the swarming nature. Mm -hmm. What's the balance between 
let's play aggressive, but like let's play under control. Let's yes. not get caught in over pursuit and, and things like that because then you get those missed tackles. So so how do you dance that fine line of we want to be aggressive, we want to swarm to the ball, but we still want to be able to play under control? It's smart football because once we were swarming, Charles Haley never moved. <laughs> he stayed con contained in the backside. Right. Mm. So Keeping contained, it's yeah. still being smart. See, six or seven of us can swarm over here, but Charles Haley got to stay there. If we come now side, Tony Tobin got to stay there. Yeah. And we did that, and, and we practiced that all day. And, 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 I, and I always talk about culture. And this becomes a culture. Dan Quinn is trying to create a culture. Mm -hmm. A culture, you just adapt to it. It just happens. Yeah. And that's what we did. We, we didn't think about it. We just swarmed. But we knew nobody wasn't going to get outside because Charles was back there. So orchestrated chaos. Yeah. It, it, was, it was aggressive, it, but there was, there was a, a map to all of yeah, it. Yeah. All you got to do is just stay out there. Just don't let him get outside of you. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you keep that container yeah. handle business yeah. the way that you, you need to. And, and, you know, that's why I'm not going to say that uh, they ran. We don't need to go out and get a defensive tackle. Everybody saying we need to go out no. and get. No. Our defensive ends have, have to play better. Yes. And if you're going to put Michael Parsons out there, he's going to have to understand he has to play the run. Because as the season go on and the teams get better, you, you cannot let that be an issue. See, with Philadelphia, that's not going to be. We rushed for 134 yards. In the second half, mm -hmm. trying to come back, trying to get up our, our defense. Yeah. Well, ain't nobody going to try Philadelphia. If they make it to the playoffs, they continue to stay healthy and make it to the playoffs and stay this team and get better, they're going to be like, we ain't running up in there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we have to develop. Yeah. We're a team not, not going to think about it. Correct. You know, it's almost like a shutout corner. Like, <laughs> no, nah, we ain't throwing over there. <laughs> right. I you, mean, you, we'll try him on certain plays. Sure. And, and that's what we haven't developed as a, a run-stopping team. We haven't developed that yet. Do you think that's the, the number of stunts and twists and games they're playing that it's causing them to lose gap integrity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, you, when, you are, when you used to flying around, yes. yeah. like I say, we have never faced an offense that was as disciplined. Yes. And, and we, your boy, he missed about four uh, pass option run reads yeah. where Parsons just flew down in mm -hmm. there. And he stay waiting. <laughs> They, and Playing that aggressiveness oh, against they, him. Yeah. They let him fly down in there. And they stay up, still gave the ball to Sanders. Right. Yeah. Watch the next game we play. <laughs> but they're going to snatch that thing out of there. Yeah. And he gonna, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we have to be disciplined. And, and, and I understand. But it's one dude. I don't care if he's disciplined or not. That's Parsons. Yes. Okay. Everybody else. I'm going to ask you to do your job. Like, he would say Charles would stay home. Yeah. But if we was going to have a wild card or a wild cat, <laughs> it was going to be Charles. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. It, I'm serious. It, but like you said, when, if his responsibility was to stay backside, he was going to do it. But if you get him into a normal game yes. down the distance, you, can, you may see a wild cat move. Yeah. So now as we turn the page from that Philadelphia game to Detroit now and looking forward now for this Cowboys team, four straight games against the NFC North, starting with Detroit on Sunday, and then they welcome in Chicago two weeks from now. What does this stretch mean for the Cowboys to be able to not only bounce back from the Philly game, but now build some momentum to be able to put some things together, especially with two home games before the bye week, before they go visit Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay? Yeah, I mean, look, you've got a, a an opportunity to take advantage of two teams that are, are pretty down on their luck right now in, yeah. in the Lions and, and the Bears, and then you get that bye week, you get that time, and then that Green Bay game, going to Lambeau, I, I mean, that doesn't look nearly as intimidating I as it did about, about, that game about all of a four or five the weeks ago. We see in Green I, Bay, yeah. I, I mean, after you've seen the way the Giants and the Jets mm -hmm. were able to, yes. to handle that football team, you got to feel better about your chances, but... I mean, just stay the course. I think it's yeah. I think it's really important that they come out of this four game stretch three and one minimum. No. I think I think three and one out of this four game stretch is a very big deal for them, and I, I think that's well within their reach. I, I think they are clearly better right now than three of the four teams, and and yeah, I would absolutely. make an argument that they're better than all four. So you gotta you mm. gotta come away with those victories. I, I think we can come away with four. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking I'm, go I'm, four I'm, and zero on the stretch. I, I like I'm, it. I'm, I'm Dak back. Um, I'm we going up to. Lambo is just 
people just intimidated about Lambo. Yeah. So they just football team. We we a better team. I, we a better team than the team. I Philadelphia had a complete team. Yeah. Yep. They were disciplined, and they they just beat us. They outmanned us. Right. So mano mano, it it happened. But this where we we step it up. The next four games, let's just go and sweep them and. And this be where we need to be. Kenny so ain't looking for a clean what sweep. What month this is? It's October. 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 Uh, you know, I ain't want to bring up Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a, that's a long so way away, yeah, man. That's we, what I'm saying. But hey, we, hey. These, these next three games, yeah. it's, it's Christmas, baby. Yeah. yeah. That's and then I, you get a bye week? <laughs> Come on, man. I'm going to be asking my players, don't take the bye week because you're going to be so fat <laughs> from eating up all these hey, all this Halloween you're, candy. You're, you're going to some, you're gonna get some additional Jalen Hurts practice, though, against mm. Justin Fields here in a couple weeks. Mm. Another yeah. running quarterback who there runs a lot go. of RPO. So. And even Jimmy. Lay the ham on it. When we, you remember we played in the NFC Championship game. Right. Jimmy had a, a talk with us, the team. He knew who, yeah. he knew the guys that went out. He knew the guys that party. He knew right. he was just that coach. Yeah. Right. And he said, give me seven days. <laughs> For real. I remember that. Yeah. Give me seven days. Yeah. I promise you, we'll win the game. Yeah. It is live at the Cowboys <laughs> Club at the Star in Frisco. Man, Cowboys <laughs> Crosstalk like on the Dallas Cowboys Radio <laughs> Network. <laughs> All right, here on 105 through the fan. Coming up next, we're going to catch up with what Kenny's got going on these days, and we're going to get some predictions on what's going to happen on Sunday. How did the Cowboys find a way to get a win against the Detroit Lions? We'll do that next on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. SWBC Mortgages Cowboys Cross Talk. Cross Talk. Check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Brought to you by A Number One Air, the official HVAC and electric partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com. 
trusted by millions, trusted by America's team. The National Medal of Honor Museum. Join the mission at mohmuseum.org and by SWBC Mortgage. Customized solutions to help you meet your personal and business goals. Visit swbc.com. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton and Kevin Gray. It is Cowboys Cross Talk live on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Appreciate you joining us live at the Star in Frisco at the Cowboys Club. Kevin Gray, 105 through the fan, our three-time Super Bowl champion, Nate Newton, our Dallas Cowboys insider, Bobby Bill, and our Cowboys legend, Kenny the Shark Gant, joining us live at the Ooh. Cowboys Club. <laughs> Liberty Tax is a proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Schedule an appointment today at libertytax.com slash Cowboys. Cowboys taking on the lines on Sunday. We'll get to predictions here in just a moment. Let's catch up with Kenny yeah. the Shark Gannon. What you got going on these days Man, and uh, what you're out here doing out there? I, I, I do a lot. My, my charity is Shark 29 Charities. Um, I, I house and protect women of domestic violence. I lost a sister in 90 the year I was drafted. Um, so I advocate on behalf of uh, the women of domestic violence so incredible I spent, I spent a lot of time great job great yes. incredible work that's incredible work very yeah. admirable work yeah. very yeah. admirable yes yeah anything else you got going on these days obviously doing a lot of work there busy anything else keeping up with the, the nfl it seems like these days as well what else you got going on these oh, yeah. days I'm, I, I like traveling to the games um, okay a lot of the, the games that i go to now is like my bucket list Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, You're crossing so, off each of the, oh, yeah. the bucket list so games I, for yourself. I, yeah, okay? I actually went to the Raiders a couple of years ago. I never – we played in uh, the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had never been to the Black Hole. So. Yeah. Okay. But that was – I got, I left out of that uh, about the second quarter. <laughs> you couldn't handle no more. It's like, I got I to gotta go. I got to go. There's too much going on with the Black and yeah. Silver there. Yeah. Well, good to hear. I'm glad to appreciate yeah. you, uh, you know, stopping down with man, us, this, obviously, on this, this evening, man. Great. Always a uh, pleasure. What's it like catching up and, and seeing, you know, uh, old teammates like, like Nate these days? He going to see me because he got to yeah. go to one of his functions. I got to yeah. do that. Man. Yeah, Nate, okay. uh, Nate yeah. Is, uh, he, keep, he keep you – he's still Nate. Yeah. And one thing he did, <laughs> he, he protected me as a rookie. Uh, from the, my H home boy, from man, the HBCU, we both, we both from Florida, mm -hmm. and I went to Albany State. He fam you, so we, you know, we, we just love on each other, man. Right? You yeah. know, it's great. Well, Nate, it sounds like you was protect a lot of people. This day. not only protect the children, you was <laughs> right. protect a lot of folks way back in the day, wow, man. Wow, man, I tried, man. You <laughs> love a sex deal, huh? He may love not, a sex. <laughs> <laughs> he, he may not remember, but I never sung as a rookie. Because oh, of him. okay. Yeah. He didn't have to sing the home boy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> my homeboy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. You didn't have to sing because I, I know didn't that have to That's sing. good stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully the Cowboys will be singing uh, the tune of victory on Sunday oh, they yes. when they take on the Detroit Lions. One and four are the fighting Danny, Danny Campbells. And, of course, Dak Prescott coming back. Let's get to predictions. I already know what Nate going to say. Yes, sir. Because you can just tune in the first take and hear what Michael Irvin got to say. I'm sure <laughs> right. Nate going to say right. the exact same thing. Um, right. So, Bobby, I'll start with you. Predictions on Sunday. How does this game look between Detroit and the Dallas Cowboys at AT&T Stadium? Well, as, as much as Detroit's defense has struggled, that's still a, you know, you talk about the fighting Dan Campbell's. Dan Campbell's M.O. is, is toughness, is physicality. That's what he wants his guys to embody. So I actually think it's a, a team that in all likelihood is going to look to like, all right, let, let's, let's get some hits in on this yes. quarterback. First game back, let, let, let's bring him back. Let's see uh, how, how much Test he can take. Test him a little bit. And so, yeah, I think they're going to come in. They're going to be, you know, they'll, they'll be trying to hit Dak and, and, you know, really try to bring him back into the, to the fold that way. But, look, I think that, as good as Detroit's offense has been, I think Dallas's defense still matches up really well against them. Yes. And and when you listen to the guys in the locker and when you listen to Dan Quinn on Monday, that's an, an angry group right now. But it's a controlled anger. Right. It's it's it's, mm. it's their frustration. It, it's a frustration at their own level of play and and how they they gave up those those two right. big drives against Philadelphia. And so I think there's a lot of motivation there. Uh, and, and I think that the team in general, even though there will probably be a little bit of rust to knock off. I, I think that there's going to be a, a, a lot of momentum behind yes. Dak Prescott returning, and so I, I've got Cowboys 31-17. Nate, give me an X factor that I'm not thinking about that I need to going into Sunday that allows the Cowboys to get a win. Uh, Bo Hannon and Gallimore. The big boys in the middle. Big boys in the middle. They got to reestablish who they are yes. and show the world, even though you played against the all-world center last week, because this is the second-best offensive line we're going to face. They can score. 
And if they do get Swift back and go to running the ball, it can be a problem. So they have to reestablish themselves as run stoppers. And Kenny, going yes. to you, what are you looking forward to see on Sunday from the Dallas Cowboys to take on Detroit? I'm looking for to get back. It's a small streak of 26 points. I'm looking to stop them at 13 points. Oh, you're looking for only 13 Ooh, points from the defense. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> okay, I like it. Seeing if uh, are we looking for a Trayvon Diggs interception maybe, looking for a little, maybe a pick six or two and from you know, uh Because, you know, Jared Goff likes to throw the football to the other team sometimes now. Just like Nate took care of me. I take care of Anthony Brown. He from right. Tampa, so mm. we, that's my okay. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. I forgot about that. I okay. had to stop showing Anthony a little more love. <laughs> <laughs> he can use a little more love after what happened yeah. on Sunday night. He can use a little, right. use a little more love on, yeah. on Sunday night. Okay, so looking for maybe a pick six, maybe from Anthony Brown. From Anthony Brown. Anthony Brown, Anthony Brown on yeah, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. You, Jerry, you, I know uh, Bobby loves his quarterbacks to throw away the football to the other team. You know, Matt Stafford, Jared Goff in that vein. Are you looking for maybe a pick six or a little defensive turnover on a Sunday afternoon for maybe I, a touchdown? I, I mean, I think it, it'd be nice if they were able to get the turnovers going because, honestly, that was the the really the crux of what they were able to do really well last year was, mm -hmm. was take the ball away. That, that's kind of the thing that's been missing a little bit this year. Um, so they can and sack so the quarterback but not turning teams I, over as I, much. I think there, there's a lot of motivation for them right now. I, I think Trayvon Diggs was was very irritated, so I could see him mm. getting a pick six here. That, that'd be nice. Okay. Jared Goff will, will give you some interceptable balls. <laughs> he, he, he will give you the opportunity to pick a few off. So uh, the opportunities are going to be there. They're going to have to, you know, see those through and, and complete those plays. But I, I, I just really think that this is a motivated defense that's – upset with themselves yes. for, for how they let things down last week. And I, I, I don't see that happening in back-to-back -back games. Right. Fighting Dan Campbells and the Fighting Dan Quinn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. There I'll, you go. I'll, I'll take yeah. our Dan. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll definitely take our Dan versus the Absolutely. Dan on the other side. Former Dallas Cowboy Dan Campbell, that is, yep. uh, as well. The game will be live on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network, 105 through the fan. That game begins at high noon at AT&T Stadium. Brad Chan, Babe Loffenberg, Christy Scales will be on the call. The game will also be on CBS with Jim Nance, Tony Romo, and Tracy Wolfson. And again, the Dallas Cowboys at 4-2, and two, welcoming in the Detroit Lions. 1-4 and four on Sunday afternoon. I'm going to take the Cowboys 30-7 to seven Ooh, over Detroit wow. on Sunday afternoon. 30 points. I think Dak Prescott, the return of Rain Dakota Prescott, is going to inspire this football team. We're going to see some offense score on CeeDee Lamb. I know is looking forward to the return of Dak Prescott. Michael Gallup, as you were mentioning earlier, I think this offense finds a way to get 30 points on the board, courtesy of not just the offense, but I think a defensive score will also help this football team as well. I'm looking for a dominant performance because, as you mentioned, Bobby, this defense looks to be – they were embarrassed a little bit last week against the Philadelphia Eagles. I think they come in and ready to play some football on Sunday afternoon. It looks like Cowboys consensus for the yes. group going up against Detroit on Sunday. We appreciate everyone who joined us live on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Thank you so much to our Cowboys legend, Kenny the Shark Gant, for joining yeah. us live at the Thank Cowboys you. Club Thanks this evening. Appreciate you taking your time yes. out this evening. Nate, as always, good to see you, sir. Good to see you, my yes, friend. Sir. Glad to be back. December I promise you. in October. I'm not leaving you for the rest of the season. You got me all <laughs> the rest of the season, okay? Cool, cool. Don't you worry about it. I'm out here all season. Bobby, Good to see you, my guy, as nice always, man. Here, man. I appreciate you not shooting the wheels off while I was doing the show tonight, <laughs> no, man. No, no, Thank I'm, you so I'm, much, I'm, man. I'm, I'm I appreciate you being <laughs> yeah. on your best behavior uh, live at the Dallas Cowboys, uh, at the Cowboys Club right here on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Again, high noon on Sunday, Dallas Cowboys, Detroit Lions on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Can the Cowboys make it 5-2 and two and get themselves a four-game winning streak against the NFC North started against Detroit on Sunday? Kevin Gray of 105 to the fan. Nate Newton, good to see you as always. Our Dallas Cowboys insider, Bobby Bell. Kenny the Shark Gant, good enough to join us here right. on the Dallas Cowboys yeah. Radio Network. Yes, Again, appreciate you joining us on Odyssey. Blockchain. And the Odyssey. <laughs> you're going to shout out all the sponsors before we get out of here. I know you're paying the bills. The bills are going to get paid. Yeah. We'll be back next week live uh, at the Cowboys Club here yeah. at the Star in Frisco. I promise Nate will be on his best behavior next week. Yeah. you going to be all right next yeah, week? will be all right. Next week? Yeah. All right, man. 80-point win. Cowboys Crosstalk live on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Y'all have a good night. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!